We pressed the governor today and he refused to admit he made a mistake and dodged my question about it over and over again. Do you regret not extending early voting? Well, you know what's great about our state is, is people got out to vote. What we're doing is the right thing. The right thing happened. We had a big election day. Boy, did they ever have a big election day in Florida. That was reporter Darlene Jones from WFTV in Orlando trying to get an answer from Florida Governor Rick Scott about this. Voters stuck in line for eight hours and more in polling places around the state of Florida after Governor Scott cut the days for early voting and refused to add any of them back when the lines were that long. He says it all worked fine. The right thing happened. Florida officials say the lines pop up mostly in big cities with diverse populations. They say that as if that's self-explanatory in terms of why you get long lines. But seriously, Florida officials, have you guys ever been to L.A.? Los Angeles, really big city, really diverse? We've been getting letters from people who vote in California, where they open tons and tons of polling places that serve much smaller groups of voters than the way you deal with it in Florida. In California, for example, they vote at the Neptune Society Columbarium. Uh, they vote in their neighbor's garage. They vote at the headquarters of the Venice Beach lifeguards in Los Angeles. What Californians do not do, not generally, is stand in line and wait eight hours to vote. After the cake splat of an election in Florida and several other states this year, we are watching for ideas about how to fix our broken election system. Election law expert Rick Hassan says we should declare a state like Florida an election disaster area and bring in the feds. He says Congress should nationalize the running of elections for every state with voter registration that follows you for life and the option of using your thumbprint as ID at the polls. The Brennan Center for Justice is recommending that Congress require early voting in every state the same amount and set a standard for the number of voting machines so every polling place has enough to go around. If you want to take the long view, Senator Hillary Clinton's old Count Every Vote Act is still kicking around from 2005. Then Senator Clinton wanted to declare a federal holiday for voting. She wanted to send money to the states for modernizing their elections. Here's just an idea from me, but how about when Hillary Clinton finishes up her time as Secretary of State, how about she and former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor lead a commission on reform, a national nonpartisan election reform commission? I would be for that. Who would be against that? We're getting to a point where we can't ignore the failings of our election system. We can't guarantee the vote to citizens and then ask those citizens in states around the country to stand in lines that start before dawn and end after midnight. We cannot guarantee citizens the right to vote and then look at these pictures and call it good. We cannot. It is beyond our national conscience to accept this scandal as the state of the franchise, even if you are in the political party that stands to profit from making voting harder. These images are beyond our national conscience. And yet, because voting is a federal issue and elections are administered by the states, we do not have much federal leverage over how elections are conducted. About the only leverage we have as a country, federally, is the Voting Rights Act, passed in 1965 to make sure that African Americans could vote. You want to see lines at the polls? Look at this. Bloomberg News dug up this old photo today. This is Birmingham, Alabama in 1966, the first big election held in the South since Congress passed, after, the con after Congress passed the Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act puts the states in the old Confederacy under special federal scrutiny because those states and other places earned special scrutiny on account of their past behavior. The Voting Rights Act is there to make sure that Texas doesn't wrongly purge its voter rolls or Mississippi doesn't start requiring new forms of ID that make people unable to vote who should be allowed to vote. It's not much, but the Voting Rights Act is more or less what we have in terms of federal leverage, federal enforcement for the right to vote. Today, on a day that could not have been a bigger news day anyway, today the U.S. Supreme Court announced that they're going to hear a challenge to the Voting Rights Act, to the central part of it. The lead plaintiff in the case is Shelby County, Alabama, just outside Birmingham, where they would like that special scrutiny to please go away. They'd like to handle it themselves. Joining me now is Debo Adegbele. He's the acting president and director counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Mr. Adegbele, thanks very much for joining us tonight. It's good to be with you. Um, you defended the Voting Rights Act before the Supreme Court the last time it was challenged in 2009. Um, how serious a threat does this case pose to the Voting Rights Act? I think it's a serious threat. Any time a core civil rights statute is before the Supreme Court, testing its constitutionality, we need to wake up and focus on it. So we're not happy that the case is back there. We don't think it needed to be there, but we're prepared to defend it as we have successfully in the past. Is the, um, am I right to describe the Voting Rights Act and particularly the parts of it that are being challenged with this case um, 
as sort of maximum point of federal, le federal leverage over whether or not the states do right in administering their elections? I, I think it's really a core protection. It's a fundamental piece of the whole civil rights canon. And so many civil rights statutes are based on the model and the decisions upholding the Voting Rights Act. So it's really amongst the most important statutes, not only civil rights statutes, but statutes of any kind that our federal legislature has passed. I am struck by the timing here. I mean, I don't, I don't understand the inner workings of the Supreme Court to know enough about why they would make an announcement about a case like this uh, on this kind of a time frame. I'm struck by the timing just because of what else happened this week in our national elections. Is it, should I, is it just a coincidence? Well, it's hard to know. We won't know until we get to the justices' writings years after they retire about the timing. There was an appeal that was working its way to the court. Uh, we were looking for a ruling or a decision to hear the case possibly before the election. Ultimately, it didn't come till after the election, and so it's hard to say what's in the timing. But the fact of the matter is, you never want this type of challenge before the Supreme Court because this is a core aspect of our nation's march, through, march toward progress. If you could um, change election law, if you could at least advise Congress about how to change election law, what could be done at the federal level? Are there things that could be done that would dramatically protect the franchise better than it is protected now? Absolutely. The first thing we shouldn't do is take down those protections that we've had, which is the issue presented in this case. What we need are more protections, not fewer. And the recent activity across the country targeted at many minority communities tells us that we need more protection. There are some big things to do. Um, universal registration or some type of registration that allows 18-year-olds to be registered when they have their birthday, something modeled on selective service registration or the like, but applies across the board. That would be very helpful. Expand early voting. Right? Let's not have those lines because we have a bigger period when people can exercise their franchise. I think that would be very important. And another thing that we saw this time in the elections that we don't need to have is this idea that people can go to the polls and challenge voters on election day. That's sort of an, an anachronistic piece of, a, of, a, of the voting story. And let's not have people there intimidating voters. Challenges can be done long before election time and let the folks that administer elections have everybody vote. And on the, let's take specifically that piece about early voting because that's so on people's minds right now because of the restrictions on early voting that really had uh, the Republican officials that restricted early voting this year never made an argument for why they were restricting it. They just said, we have enough time, we have enough time, we have enough time. They never made a case for why they needed to get rid of the time uh, that was there. What about the division of labor, the jurisdictional division of labor between Congress saying we ought to have more early voting in every state in the country and the states asserting their own right to run elections as they see fit? How do you see that uh, both morally and legally breaking down? So in a sense, that, that comes back to the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. The ideas that were used to advance the discrimination against minority voters in, in Birmingham and other places was this idea of states' rights, that the states can administer their elections and even interpret the Constitution in the way they see fit and that there wasn't a uniform federal standard. The Voting Rights Act was a definitive answer to that question, that the Constitution must be followed and it's not for the states to pick and choose. It was an important turning point. And so I think that there is a federal role to play, certainly in federal elections, to bring greater uniformity. What we want as Americans is more voting. We want to invite people to the party, not dissuade them. What do you think of my Sandra Day O'Connor, Hillary Clinton idea? I'm all for it. <laughs> hey. uh, Debo Degale, uh, you are a guy who does not persuade easily, I know, because you're a line of work. Thank you for being here, sir. Thanks it's great so to much. have you here. Thanks. Great to be here. All right. The best